how do you set up iRacing for the best possible experience? I'm gonna let you know in this video, we're gonna go through. Don't worry about it, I got you covered. I know it's really complicated. We were all here once and iRacing UI is just horrendous. So we're gonna go into the options menu, we're gonna set up everything. Just to let you know, I'm running here a Moza FSR rim, which is really nice on a Moza R9 base, but it's attached to a GT Mega wheel stand, which is the cheapest thing you can buy. And then we've got Fanatec V3 pedals on the wheel stand and I'm sitting in a play seat challenge. So it's a really weird setup. Some of it is high end, some of it is like the lowest end you can go. So we're gonna start off here with pedals. I'm gonna show you a few tricks here for pedals, especially if you haven't got the best pedals or best attachment pedals like we've got here. So pedals, throttle should be easy. Depress it fully and back. I wouldn't mess around doing a dead zone here. I would just sort of get used to not really being on the throttle. Um, but if you do want to do a dead zone, you can release it there and that becomes your dead zone. Do you see? So I'm going to come back now. I'm actually going to do it again all the way back. Now the brake pedal is interesting because I've got a Fanatec V3 load cell brakes here, but the, the rig isn't strong enough to cope with it. I'll show you. I'm trying to go all the way. Oh, it's really difficult. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that in a race because I'm actually lifting myself up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to where I think is where I want to be max break in the race. That's Go basically 100% and then a little bit more. 100%, a little bit more. So that's about 72. And then I'm going to release it. So now you can see that that should be... I don't need to go like this. Oh, all the way up. I can just go there. In fact, I'll make it a little bit easy just to illustrate the point. So I'm going to go now to here, release, and you can see now it's a lot easier to get to 100% break. So let me just do what I wanted before, which was about 70. I think that's actually changed, but oops, that reverses it. I'm not doing a very good job here, am I? Don't worry, we've got this. I'm back. There we go. Right, so now my brake's good, my throttle's good. You can check in the race if you're leaning on them, your throttle, your brake, and you can build in the dead zone. The clutch we're not gonna do. That's it, pedals, easy, sorted. There are some secret steps you can do with the pedals if you want to avoid locking up. Let me in the comments if you wanna know how to do that. It's a little bit more complicated. Steering wheel, really important your steering wheel in the game matches your actual rotation in real life. I've had this be wrong quite a few times and it can make you you can feel like you're driving slowly, it's not your fault, basically. The, the, the in-game wheel might be applying a lot more rotation or less than you're expecting. Let's go into steering. Really easy, one way all the way. Ugh. Another way all the way. I've locked this in the Moza Pit House software to be 520 degrees. So just put it back to 50. And now we go left. So there we go, 520. Hold it by the, this one. Now it does come up with this warning for me, I'm not sure why. Um, that might be a Moser thing, but that's done. And now you can see the steering wheel at the top matches completely my rotation. That is really, really, really important. If that's not right, stop what you're doing and do it again. Gearbox, really easy. Bonk, upshift, downshift. Not with the hose pattern. Now, before you go out, there's a few more things I would do if you're using a wheel and eye racing, which is pretty much everyone. Enter and exit your car. I've mapped it to this button here. Definitely map that on your wheel. You don't want to be faffing around the keyboard doing escape. And look left and right. Please, please, please map these buttons. So I've got look left and right as a button all the way left of my steering wheel. And I've got look right all the way there as well. Now, you can mess around here with your force feedback. Having driven this Ferrari GT3 Evo, actually no, that's not right. Having driven a Ferrari GT Challenge in real life, which is a little bit more powerful than the Ferrari GT3, um, you don't want massive force feedback. That's not how these cars work. They've got power steering. So you want to get the detail, but you don't want to be overpowered and, and tensing up and fighting it. So mess around here. They say the wheel force should be the same as your uh, wheel base. So this is nine Nm for Moza R9, but the strength I've been messing around with. So do do that. Field of view as well. Lots of field of view calculators online. Let you in a little secret. I've never been a field of view wizard. I've never actually done a field of view calculation, but I seem to do okay on iRacing. Just work out what's best for you. All I would say is don't zoom in too much. 
you might be like, oh, I can see more of the road, but it's just, it can be a little bit um, unnatural when it comes to cornering and sensing um, oversteer. So it can be really tempting to do that, but I would really try to keep it a little bit more realistic, even if your window will extend the track a little bit smaller. It'll be easier to see how that, how the track is changing relative to your cockpit, and then you'll be able to work out oversteer. So you can actually map as well um, your horizon and your driver height to your wheel um, with buttons. So you can be in the car live and do it, a little top secret there. The other stuff I do is I um, map the uh, cycle delta display to this button here. That means I can change it from, um, you know, uh, from best lap in the race to best session time ever to optimal time, depending on what I'm trying to chase down. So map that as well. So you're not trying to get your tab button on the keyboard. Other stuff I map. Let's see what we have here. Um, I don't do ignition starter, pit speed limiter. I've mapped here, headlight flash. God damn it. One of them I've mapped headlight flash. Find out when I need it in a night race. <laughs> brake bias, um, I've mapped. Um, that basically goes up or down on the brake bias. ABS, you can't go up or down. Traction control, I'm not sure you can go up or down. I feel like you should, but ABS you can't. Brake bias you can, so map that to an encoder. Black boxes, have a look what I've done here with the black boxes. So this is going next and previous. You can see the buttons um, highlighting. And then I've got next and previous like in the black box. And then here I've got increment selected. Trust me, this works. So if you've got two D-pads like that, do like that. If you've got a funky switch, you can do it all in one actually. That's the advantage of having a funky switch. Don't have a funky switch on this one. Um, when I'm streaming, I will be mapping these to my wheel as well, so I can do um, change position of the car I'm following and also change the camera, really important. So coming up here. Now I wanna show you some little goodies that you get in the Moser wheel. So we're gonna come out of this and we're gonna race. And you can see the Moser wheel, the FSR, put the pit limiter on has some really, really, really interesting stuff. Really interesting stuff. You can see the speed there, which is super cool. You can see the gears and you can see the tires. Now the tires, I don't think really work in iRacing. I think when I come in and change them, it might update. But iRacing doesn't give you live tire information. Bit interesting that ACC does. Um, then we've got current lap, well there's a lot of cars here. Current lap, um, position which is 50 second, very nice. Lap, TC, and then we've got best lap and last lap. The position won't update in iRacing until we go over I believe, so worth bearing that in mind. But a lot of really nice stuff here and you can um, adjust that in the Moser Pithouse software so you can get it the way you want. Just to show you, look right, look left. This would be return to pits. Um, might say the car needs to be stationary. Yeah, it kind of needs to be stopped. This is our delta that we can cycle through there. Um, pit limiter I've shown you before. Um, what's this one? That might be headlight flash, I don't know. Um, and then we've got brake bias here. So I'll go through the funky stuff now. Brake bias is here on the wheel. You can see that changing as well. So hopefully that's really helpful. Let me know what you want to see more. I do have a affiliate code for iRacing, if you want to sign up as a new member, please, please, please hit that. It makes it possible for me to do these, but really cool to share this stuff that I don't know if it exists on YouTube, but I just wanted to give it to you for free. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you, I'll see you next time.